Hallelujah. Shalom, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is there any noise in this house of God today? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So glad to see you all of here to be together in the family. And, uh, you know, we're going to start our service today. And let's bow down and pray. Father Jesus, thank you, Lord, for the abundant blessings that you have given to us, Lord. For today is a new journey, a new day that you have created for us to live in. And this is a grateful uh, moment for us to worship you, the Lord. So when we have breath, every, when, every, every single breath that we have, we want to praise and want to give it to you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit fall down in this place and touch us and deliver us lord jesus we know that we are victory lord in this place thank you jesus we love you and we're hallelujah. ready to praise and worship you hallelujah amen and amen
it, we can move the mountains, Amen. everything that we can do in Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We believe in what Jesus do, that everything is by faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give it sing to Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Father, I pray for their heart. May you prepare their heart for the seed that is about to be sown, God, that will multiply, that it will capture your heart. We thank you, Father, for uh, the, the young adult in this place as well. Uh, God, I pray that you give them a heart, the same heart that you have for the young people as well, God. We thank you, Father, for the fire that is about to be released. We thank you for your presence that is already here, God. We love you, Father. In the name of Jesus, everyone that believes, say amen. 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 Give God's praise. Before we sit down, can you give at least a hug to five people in this place? And can we all move, move to the front a little bit? <laughs> Oh yeah, all right. One. <laughs> Thank you, music band. Five. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's all move to the front a little bit. Come on, young people. <laughs> Yeah, feel good. Shalom. Shalom. How are you guys doing? Ooh. If I say one, two, three, you're going to say fire. All right? You ready? I want you to raise your right hand. Raise it up. Okay, this is an act of prophetic. I want you to grab it, and I want you to pull it down as hard as you can. I want you to say fire. Okay, one, two, three. Fire. That was me, y'all. Come on, One, now. two, three. Fire. fire! Thank you, Pastor Rachel, for having me here. Everybody say thank you, Pastor Rachel. Thank you, Pastor Rachel. We love you. We love you. You're awesome. You're awesome. Buy me ice cream. Okay, my name is Hans. Everybody say hi, Hans. Hi, Hans. That's my wife, Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi, Christine. That's my mother and my stepfather. Hey, hey. What's up? That's my team right here, you Leo do. and Deepin. Yeah. We are here to serve you, and I believe that God is about to speak to you personally. Amen. Amen. This is Team Jesus. No, this is the Team Jesus. Yeah, Team oh. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to pass it together, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7. Can we read together? 1, 2, and 3. Love is patient and kind. kind. Love, Love is not jealous or boastful or, or proud or rude. It, it does not demand its own way. way. It is it's not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does it not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins, wins out. Love, love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always humble. <laughs> every every circumstances. So my title this morning, this afternoon, is Own Your Impact. Look at your neighbor and tell them, own, own your, your impact. impact. Okay, when I read passages like this, it's a hate and love kind of relationships. On one side, it reminds me, it reminds me of how good God is in my life. Uh, that, that God is patient with me. That God is kind with me. He loves me. He never gives up on me. But on the other side, as I read this, God reminded me, people, um, that is certain people that I need to be patient with. Are you guys with me? Yes. Yeah. That I needed to be kind with. That, that I needed to be uh, uh, not e easily irritated. To not keep some record wrong. I remember you did this to me, okay? But God says, don't do that. No. And especially, it reminds me to endure through every circumstances. Everybody say with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. 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 We all know that not everyone is the same. Agree? Agree. Look at your neighbor. Hey, you look different than me. But I know I'm more cute. But I know you're more cute. The truth is some, more, some people are more loving than the others. Agree? Yes. One, two, three. Fire. Fire. <laughs> you know, so to, to, to the other people... We already invested our time, our sweat, our blood, our energy, our money, and they're still ungrateful creature. You guys know what I'm talking about? Look at Tineva, I think he's talking about you. <laughs> uh, how many in 
Indonesian in this place? Almost everyone here? Okay. The Greek word, remember this, I'm a teacher some Greek word, okay? The Greek word for this is hashtag kurang ajar. <laughs> How do you you know those people, right? How do you spell it? <laughs> <laughs> and yet, these are the very people that God often reminded us as we read 1 Corinthians 13. Amen? Now I want you to imagine those unlovable creatures. Close your eyes a little bit and allow the Holy Spirit to remind you those people. And take a deep breath and say with me, oh, Hallelujah. 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 Okay, now I want to read this passage again. <laughs> Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. Or, bro, okay, remember, I want you to imagine those unlovable people, okay? It does not demand on its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never lose faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstances. The truth is human love, it's so conditional. Many relationships start with, I don't feel the same anymore, Pastor Hans. He, he doesn't treat me the way he used to be. He forgot my favorite ice cream. He, 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 he's just different. I don't have the butterfly in my stomach anymore. And it feels like there is no more sparks in my heart. You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> or, or maybe you said that person betrayed me. That person lied to me. That person hurt me. Notice the emphasis is always me and I. The Bible says in Psalm 136 verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. good. His love endures forever his loving kindness and unfailing love is everlasting it talks about it's a, it's a marriage covenant kind of love so when we talk about marriage you, you guys know the vow that marriage couple made in their wedding day in sickness or in health for better or for worse marriage covenant is not a contract it does not have expiration date it's a choice that binds forever. God is saying to you this afternoon is this. This is my kind of love for you. Amen. I will never give up on you. Even at your worst, I'm still going to love you. And that's the way God expresses his love toward you. No matter where you are, his love endures now, he wants you to extend the same love that he has deposited within you. Jesus basically says, love each other as I have loved you. John 15 verse 12. So many times we handle situations like this. Uh, we, we handle it in, uh, in, in, in a, pro it's not a, it's not a professional, not a professional way, but it's not in a Jesus way that causes many times relationship to suffer. Okay? And in order to love to win, we need to give up our right to be right. Say with me, we need to give up right to be right. To be right. And in order for love to win, we need to swallow our pride. Everybody say with me, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the, 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 the truth, guys. We need to learn to say, I am sorry. Is that simple? Yeah. Oh, very simple. Then why are you making it so hard? <laughs> Say, we're going to practice together. I am? I am sorry. sorry. I am sorry. Okay, that's a good man. But I'm not wrong though, Pastor Hans. That person did this. This person did this. Maybe you're not. Maybe you are. But it doesn't matter. Because most importantly, what God has taught me up until this point is this it's not about right or wrong but it's how you respond yep can we read it together it's not about right or wrong but it's how you respond the majority of a person can be measured by how they respond to a problem 
So that sounds good. But when you choose to win, relationships suffer. I myself have been tested again and again in this area up until this point. I tell you, it's not very easy to die to ourselves. But when you choose to win, relationships suffer. But at the end of the day, you gotta weigh it up, this guys. Either you let, either you let love win, or to let ourselves win. Either decisions has consequences. Either you let Christ win, or you let the devil win. Either you let Christ be glorified, or you let the devil be glorified. Which one will you choose? Look at your neighbor. Which one? Which one? Is it? Which one? Which one? Which one? And I'm sure that many of us have good intentions. I understand that. However, many times we don't pay attention to our impact. Our intentions might be good, but our impact speaks otherwise. Somewhere along the way in the communications, there's misunderstanding that impacted others badly. Are you with me so far? Yes. Sometimes our intention it does not match with our impact. And that's when conflict begins. Our intention was good, but our impact speaks otherwise. You know your intent, but are unaware of your impact. You know you make assumption about your impact, but others don't know your intentions. They, they look at it based on your impact. Other, others may know your impact, but are, are unaware of your intentions. Others make assumptions about your in intent, but based on your impact, they got hurt. Are you with me? That's why I call this own your impact. It's part of being mature. It's part of being adult. It's part of being Christ-likeness. Unless we need to learn to own our impact, we will always be struggled with the same issue again and again. Yep. Are you with me? It doesn't matter. You can run away from the problem, from the people that piss you off, but somewhere along the way, watch my work. You will meet with different people with the same problem that will piss you off again and again until we learn to own our impact. Your impact. Amen? Amen? Amen. Say it with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, to, to own our Break impact is simply what it means to learn how to deal with the conflict through reconciliations. Reconciliations come from the Greek word that has its roots in alazo. Everybody say alazo. Alazo involves a change in the relationship between one another, from a broken relationships to restorations, from a division to unity. And change is not change until I change. Say with me, change. It's not change until I change. Look at your neighbor. Hey, you change, man. <laughs> That's why my title of the uh, sermon this afternoon is On Your Impact. And I want to share uh, 24 points. I'm just kidding. Only two points. <laughs> what it means to own your impact. When once we begin to learn our own impact, we will see breakthrough, we will see favors, we will see peace, we will see joy, we will see life. You live a life fully what God has intended you to be. Are you ready for these two points? Amen. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love this enthusiastic man. Number one, write it down. Where's your pen? Oh, he got you. Okay. You need a pen? <laughs> Number one point. Very simple, guys. It doesn't work. <laughs> Got it. Number one, be sincere and repent daily. Is that simple? Be sincere and repent daily. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 says this. Don't just pretend to love others. Really? Really? Love must be sincere. It means don't have any hidden agenda toward people. Many times we have this hidden agenda that going on within our heart when we meet a certain people. For example, we like to do extra good things for those who uh, you think you can get benefit from. Or the kind of love that is already pretense. So 
when, when we have that kind of polluted, it's not pure, it's not sincere. You do those good deeds because you want something in return. True love give less takes. Everybody tell me, true love give. True love give. Love a less takes. Less takes. Love that has anything returned in the back of your head is already polluted. And when it doesn't meet with our expectations, then we get disappointed. Well, I thought that person's going to do this, 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 this. I get that God is not good. We base on who God is based on our experience. But sometimes we need to go back. Not sometimes. All the time you need to go back to the scripture and read who God is. Not based on what we created him to be. Does that make sense? Therefore, we need to exercise repentance daily. We can only be sincere by exercise repentance Daily. It's going to be a repetition. Everybody see repetitions? Repetition. Again and again, again and again, because it goes against our flesh. Repentance is not a feeling bad just because you got caught. It is not. The original repentance is metanoia. Metanoia means change your mind. mind. Repentance comes from being honest with ourselves, with God, and with other people. It's like saying that, God, I don't want to live this kind of life anymore. That's repentance. It's turning point, it's turning away from that life, and you walk away from what you used to. It's called sin. Does that make sense? So it's being sincere and genuine in making changes in our life. That's why I say change is not change until you change. Well, yeah, you have to change first. No, 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 no. God says you change first. Amen? And God cannot bless who you pretend to be. God cannot. God cannot bless the life. Therefore, we need to learn to start being sincere. Do everything as you do unto the Lord. Is this message too hard for you guys? Or? <laughs> I'm just barely on the introduction here. <laughs> God, here like, go, go, go. <laughs> Sometimes we get to get caught up with life. About two, three weeks ago, my wife and I visited a friend of ours from work because we heard that his wife uh, just had a miscarriage. So we visited him and we have dinner, we fellowship together. And my friend have, it seems like he has things good, you know, his career is like, like climbing up, you know. And as my wife and I fellowship with a friend of ours, we began to ask Lord, What's going on in this family that we can bless them? So that they know that there is a good God in their life. Amen. So the Lord just says to us, hey, ask the wife because there's something that she needs to forgive. So we just ask, hey, is there anyone that you need to forgive? And she said, no. And then we began to say, God, she said, no, but you say yes. So which one is true? <laughs> you know, like, we don't know what's going on, right? So we ask the Holy Spirit, lead us, help us to help her so that she can realize who she needs to forgive. Because sometimes it's been so long that you forgot it, right? So we begin to ask questions about how she grew up and, and a little bit about herself, you know, what she does. We just ask questions. Because when you ask the right questions, you will get the answer, right? So finally, we understood after all the things that she has explained about, you know, getting to know her. She said, you know, I don't understand because you're the second man that asked me the same thing. That God told whoever the messenger to tell me that I need to forgive, but I really don't know who I need to forgive. And then finally, the Holy Spirit speak a word. Tell her to forgive herself. Then we just tell her, hey, we believe that God wants you to forgive yourself because you've been growing up with so much hurt and pains that you have to fight everything by your own. Everything that you achieve, you accomplish it by yourself. But you felt the need to fight for the family. The moment we speak that into her, she broke down. And she said, I, I think you're right. I needed to forgive myself. Because I let down so many people, but I don't want to let down anyone else. So she fought for herself.
And that night, the Holy Spirit ministered to the whole family. Amen. The children cried. The brother-in-law cried. The, the, the sister cried. The whole place in that one apartment got touched by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we, we got there at 7.30. We live at around midnight. That's how powerful God moved. Amen. Because there's something in your life that sometimes He wants you to let go. And the only part that you need to do is to release by saying, God, I'm sorry, God, if I've been holding on this for way too long. Does that make sense? Amen. Sometimes we fought so hard for what is right that we think it's ours. But remember, we're not the owner. Everything that you own is not yours. You're just the manager. Amen. God entrusted you to be a good steward. But sometimes lives get caught in, in, in our daily routine. And today God will remind you this one thing. Be sincere, go back to your original intent. Mm -hmm. And if you did something wrong, don't worry. There's nothing that you have done that would surprise God. Amen. Sounds good. Amen. Repent daily. Number two, I want you to learn to what it means to value others the way God valued them. James chapter 1, verse 2 3, the Bible says this Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. <laughs> it's like saying this Hey, Rachel and Harry, when problems come, be happy. <laughs> How God, it doesn't make sense. Whenever you face trials of many, 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 many kinds, many means. Many. Okay, good. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. You want perseverance? You want to grow mature? You need a problem. That's what God is saying. <laughs> but I'll tell you a secret though. Oh, this guy's laughing. I know what he's talking about. You know? Okay, so look. When problems come, that means God wants you to grow. In order to grow, sometimes, you know, preachers talk so, so like, Christianist, you don't understand, okay, yeah, 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 and then you go, like, what am I supposed to do now? Like, I don't get it. See, I'll tell you the practical things, okay? I'm that preacher. I'll tell you the day to day. I want you to learn to value others the way God valued them. Amen. What does that mean, Pastor Hans? There is a big difference the way God sees people versus the way we see people. Can I get an amen? Amen. One, two, three. Amen. Amen. See, these unlovable people, we often call them toxic people, Pastor Hans. You know, the toxic people, you know? And our tendency to cut off these toxic people in our life. Wow, well, I like how the bad people kind of like, yeah, preachy, preachy, preachy. You know, no, 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 no. We should deal with toxic people the way Jesus deal with them. Because Jesus came down and died for this very reason. Does Jesus have toxic people? No. I tell you. Yes. Remember toxic Judas? <laughs> you sold them Judas out. Iscariot. The one that stole money from Jesus. How dare you. Stole money. But uh, you know Jesus is rich, right? Jesus is rich. Can because the Bible says he has an accountant. His name is Judas. If you don't have money, why would you have a counter? <laughs> so that means he's blessed. So don't be afraid to get rich. Why? So you get blessed other people. How are you going to bless other people when you're born? Come on now. How? I hate those people that are against Christian being blessed. I'm not saying just materialistic, guys, but I encourage you to be rich. Amen. You know, I, I, I find out Christian is the most brokest uh, creature in the planet <laughs> and we serve a powerful God. <laughs> yeah, bless, bless, bless. You got five on it, bro? I know, I know, I got five dollars, bro. Like, what should I do? Come on, guys, you gotta change the system here. Anyway, that's not the point. I just wanna <laughs> give you that, you know? Bonus. So, toxic Judas betrayed Jesus. Everybody say, toxic, toxic Judas. Toxic Judas. Boo. Boo. Okay. Don't be him. Every time someone has something nice to say about about something, Toxic Judas always has something bad to say. Always. Judas was so toxic, at the end of his life, he rejected Jesus. 
He's so toxic, guys. The question is, how did Jesus deal with toxic Judas? That's the question. Jesus extended his unconditional love. The more toxic Judas, the more Jesus loved on, on Judas. Jesus knew that Judas was about to betray him, and he did not reject him. As a matter of fact, Jesus' love is the cure for toxic people. Everybody's going to be Jesus' love. Jesus' love. Is the cure. Is the cure. For toxic people. For toxic people. So love with them. <laughs> Don't cut them up. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and go like this. Don't cut them up. <laughs> Come on, Rachel, to do it, Rachel. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> With your, with your mouth. <clears throat> okay? We need to change our value system, guys. Because when we understand God's value system, our perspective change. And when we, our perspective change, our behavior will follow. We're not in the business of changing your behavior. We're not. You got to change the heart. Like what Jesus did. In James chapter 1, verse 2 says, And I want you to count it all as joy whenever you face Trials of many kinds. I think the greatest trial in my ministry is dealing with toxic people. <laughs> I just give you like that, okay? <laughs> because people is messy. Yep. People have problems. When you deal with toxic people according to God's way, it produces patience. Everybody say with me, patience. Patience. And do you know that God used toxic people? Okay, this is the biggest revelation, guys, okay? Do you know that God put toxic people in your life for a reason? He purposely put one there, two there, three there, in your midst. No matter how, how, many, how many times you run, you will meet with those toxic people. And the question is this, what comes out when God squishes you? What do you mean? It's simple this, because toxic people, it brings out the worst in you. Uh, isn't that true? What do you mean? It simply means when toxic people pisses you off, what is your, what come out out of your mouth? That shows the conditions of your heart. It's like when you squish an orange, what come out? Orange, orange, juice. orange juice. When you squish a lemon, what come out? Lemon juice. When you squeeze a durian, what comes out? Oh, <laughs> smelly. Blood. <laughs> no bueno. <laughs> the question is, when God squishes you with toxic people, what is your first reaction that comes out of your mouth? Because out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth Speaking. speaks. Oh, Jesus just raised the standard. So it's not about you anymore. It's about you. No, it's not about the other person, but it's about you. It's not about the toxic people, but it's about you. Yep. There's no Rachel. <laughs> okay. Read this together. It's not about right or wrong. Not about right or wrong. But it's how you respond. But it's how you respond. It's not about right or wrong. Not about right or wrong. But it's how I respond. It's how I respond. It's time to count people as joy. It's time to count people as joy. Yes. This is the revelations. Everyone that you appreciate will increase in value. Let that sink in. I'll be back. I'm going to start, but. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Everyone that you appreciate will increase in value. There's a saying this. There's always, the, the grass always looks greener on the other side. Have you heard, have you heard of that? I think, I think Rachel knows exactly she just bought a house, you know. Every time, I said, oh, why the grass is always greener, you know? you know? Whichever you garden to decide to water, it will increase in value. Everyone you appreciate will increase in value. And God wants to see them the way, God wants you to see them the way God sees them. Because everyone you appreciate will increase in value. Can I have eight volunteers to the front? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, four. Yeah, come, 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 come. Four, one more. I need eight people. 
Yeah, here. Come on, kids. <laughs> Step it up. Okay, Pippin, thank you for volunteering. Come to the front. <laughs> Bye. Two more. Bye. Thank you, Melvin, for volunteering. Six. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Rachel, for volunteering. Seven. <laughs> the lady in the yellow shirt, thank you for volunteering. <laughs> hey, okay, keep on my hands, guys. Woo! She was looking around. One, two, three. She's getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you an illustration here, guys. I got something in minute. Okay, come to that side a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Everyone you appreciate will increase in? Wow. In value. See, sometimes the way we look at people, it expresses our value system is so broken. Okay? You know what? Uh... I got coins here, by the way. <coughs> you know, Rachel, man, she says she's gonna buy me ice cream last time, but she forgot it, you know? Yeah, I'll just give you 10 cents. This is how much she worth, you know? 10 cents. <laughs> you know, Melvin, you was part of in that cell group that's supposed to pray for me, but then that cell group ended up gossiping about me? It's only one cent, man. I don't know about it. I don't like it. <laughs> You know, I, he, 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 he don't like me, so I don't like him either, you know? But, you know, I, man, well, you play music earlier? What do you play? Games. Okay, well, I, I like games too, so you cool. I'll give you 10 cents, boy. Yeah. You know? So, what's your name? Kenneth. Kenneth? You play music? Kenneth? Yeah. Your, what, what do you play earlier? Singing. Oh, you sing earlier? <laughs> Bro, 25, your 20. voice is so good over here. I'll give you a uh, 15 cent, bro. No, wow. 20 cent. Hey, bro. man. Uh, yeah, what's voice up? voice is so cool. <clears throat> what do you play earlier? Oh, I didn't play. What do you play? Why not? Oh, um. So tell me about what do you like the most? What's your hobby, man? Oh, basketball. Oh, basketball. What's your favorite team? Uh, oh, Oklahoma City. Oklahoma. I like that city, so yeah, I'll give you uh, 20 cent. You're cool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> How about you, man? What's your name? Music. Ian, you play music? Yeah. What to play? I don't like piano. I'll give you five cents. <laughs> <laughs> well, too bad you were five cents, boy. <laughs> hey, Pippin. Oh, everybody say hi, Pippin. Hi, Pippin. Since you like, uh, she like friends, the show. It's cool, I'll give you 25 cents. Whoa. What's your name? NJ. NJ. What do you like to do? I don't like you, I'll just give you one cent. <laughs> Sometimes there is no logical explanation how we value people. Isn't that true? We laugh about it now. But this is what we do from day to day. We start giving value based on what we see. Come on now. Well, I think he played guitar. I played guitar too. I like him. Well, he doesn't support me when my hardships are. He doesn't love me. So we begin to place judgment against people. Isn't that true? And today, God wants to restore how we value people. Because everyone you appreciate will increase in value. Just because when we don't learn to value people the way God values people, no one will be ever good enough for us. Sounds good. Yeah. Give God a hand, guys. Thank you for coming up. <laughs> you can keep it. You can keep it. Give it to me. You don't want to keep it? <laughs> Make it dollars next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one million. He's a young hustler, guys. <laughs> Many times, we tend to focus on who is wrong, not what is wrong. And there are two completely different things. When God put us in a situation like this, instead of blaming others, we should ask ourselves this. If God allowed this to happen in my life, what is it that he's trying to teach me? Sounds good. 
every problem that comes in your way, in order for us to be able to consider it as joy, we need to, we need to stay, take a step back and ask God, what is it that you're trying to teach me in this moment? Begin to shift your mind and believe this one thing, okay? Everybody say, me shift. 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 In Jesus' name, shift. shift. <laughs> That's it, you. Uh, the computer froze again, sir. Everybody with you guys want to run through anything that happens to me today is in my best interest. And it is opportunity for me to learn and grow. And grow. Can we read it one more time? And this time I want to read it. One, two, and three. Anything that happens to me today is in my best interest. And it is an opportunity for me to learn and grow. And grow. <clears throat> it's time for us to own our impact. Like, how, how do we, how do we uh, begin to learn to own our impact? It simply means this, letting go our hurts, our agenda, our judgments, our comparisons, our right to be right, our expectations on people, how we place a value on each individual with coins. Maybe it, we need to learn to let go of using people for our own benefits, our assumptions, <coughs> Our guilt, our resistance toward God. Maybe our anger and our disappointments. Is there anyone that God reminded you to be reconciled with? Is there any unfinished business that God wants you to be reconciled with? Maybe any past hurts, any toxic people that you need to be reconciled with and release forgiveness. Love. It's not a thing. Everybody say with me. Love, Love. is not a thing. It's not. Love is a person. And his name is Jesus. Here's the truth. The power to love is already present inside of you. Because Jesus is love and he dwells in you. Amen. If the power to love is already present, and Jesus is love, and He lived inside of you, so you have the power to actually love. Isn't that powerful? And I want to challenge you guys this afternoon. Will you be sincere? <clears throat> Letting go of what is done, it's done. And repent daily. And I'm sorry, God, I, I, I messed up this time. But when you exercise an awareness of what you have done wrong, you will move faster toward maturity. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. And number two, I want you to learn to value others the way God valued them. Amen. Sounds good? Amen. Amen. And this time, I want to read this together, this passage. When you, were, when you see the word love, I want to change to I am. Okay? Sounds good? One, two, and three. I am patient and kind. I am not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. I am not irritable and it, I don't keep no record of being wrong. I do not rejoice about injustice but rejoices when the truth wins out. I don't give up. I never lose faith. I'm always helpful. I, and I endure through every circumstances. Now I want to read it together because remember, when you follow Jesus, when we are the church, we don't go to church, we are the church. This is a gathering of the church. I want you to remember that it's not about I, but it's about we. We are part of one another. Okay? So I want you to read this last passage instead of love. I want to change it to we are. Sounds good? Mm -hmm. Can we all stand together? Amen. I want you to say it as a prayer, God, this is us. And we want to learn to love. You guys ready? Amen. One, two, and three. We, we are patient, patient and kind. kind. We are not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. We, we do not kind. demand our own way. We, we do not be irritable. And we do not keep no records of being wrong. 
We do not rejoice about injustice, but rejoice when the truth wins out. We do not give up. We do not lose hope, faith. We always have hopeful, and we endorse through every circumstance. Amen. Can we uh, take a moment to pray together? Can I have the music to the front? Maybe it's just a keyboard. I want to take the, uh, this moment for us to get together and just pray and allow the, the love himself to minister to our heart. Sounds good? The message is not too hard. Very practical. Amen. You have the power to love. Look at your neighbor. You have? You have. The power. Power. To love. To love. Can we sing How Great Is Our God? That's my favorite song, man. Walkie E. Can we all step to the front? Everybody line up here, maybe like a, a little circle.